You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What's up, everybody? You are watching slash listening to the Command Zone Podcast. I'm your host, Jimmy Wong. How's it? It's Josh Lee Kwai. Brawl decks are here, the pre-constructed Brawl decks, and they're really exciting for a number of reasons. One, we get a bunch of new legendary creatures, but also we get to tune these decks, not just into other Brawl decks, but all the way up to EDH decks. And that's what we're doing in this new mini series, very short episodes, uh, where we're going to take all the Brawl decks one by one and tell you what cards we would put in there to level it up. Yeah, so Throne of Eldraine cards haven't been fully spoiled at the time we're doing this. We won't be talking about those. We'll be saying, what 40 cards from the history of Magic can you just shove into these pre-cons and immediately get it up to speed as a commander deck? But before we get into all that, in order to do this, you're probably going to need one or more of the Brawl decks. So you should go to (laughs) cardkingdom.com slash command zone, and you can order all that stuff right now. You can also order the Commander 2019 stuff if you haven't got your hands on that. Also, Throne of Eldraine, Mm -hmm. it's on the horizon, so... Collector's boosters, baby. (laughs) (laughs) So you can pre-order that stuff right now, and again, when you use our affiliate link, you really are supporting this show, Game Nights, and all of our content. Another way to support the show is directly at patreon.com slash command zone. Our patrons actually get to talk to us, and me and Josh, in Discord every day, and this idea for these episodes came from a patron so you guys really do help influence the show and make it possible and we call it one lucky patron every single week so this week's episode or this mini so is dedicated to to shane Shane ireton shane you rock also want to say um oh yeah patrons helping out with the show a lot Uh, the final way to support all of our content is with uh purchasing ultra pro products oh yes of course yeah so you know, the first thing we did when we got the Brawl decks was take them out and put them all into Eclipse sleeves because you want to keep all of these cards in the best shape possible. And also, Ultra Pro has all of the theme stuff around Throne of Eldraine. So if you want to play mat, deck box, all that stuff, they've got you covered. This is the best looking set in a while. Yeah, uh, all the art on this set's crazy. I want that play mat with the Seb McKinnon art so mm-hmm. bad. Uh, what I was going to say is that patrons get four extra shout outs because we're doing four extra oh, minisodes. Right. So we say four extra names. Okay. So thank you guys. All right, <laughs> let's get right into it. Today we are talking about Chulane Teller of Tales. Probably could have said that earlier on, but I'm sure you read the episode title as well. Chulane is the new Bant Commander, so we'll read this quickly and we'll just get right to it. All right. This card's crazy. I know. Two, a green, a white, and a blue for a legendary creature, Human Druid. It's a 2-4 with Vigilance. And whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card, then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Untapped. Yeah. You can also pay three and tap Chulane to return target creature you control to its owner's hand. So it's got a lot of similarities to every other Bant thing that Bant does which is you like creature spells entering the battlefield and ramping. It's just very generically powerful. It yeah. pays you off big time for stuff you already want to do. Yeah, it seems it seems nuts, and I think everybody had the same feeling when they saw this card. It doesn't really need that last line of text where it's like, oh, if you happen to somehow whiff on all your card draw, <laughs> you, can bounce. you can bounce a creature and just get the chain going again. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I don't think we need to say much about it. It's already no. very powerful. It is very powerful, and one of the things about this deck that was a little challenging is that it's generically powerful. It doesn't yeah. say, you know, you look at a card that, like, Prosh, and it's like, you want to make tokens and sacrifice them. Like, that makes sense. Chulane is just, like, cast creatures benefit. Yeah, so uh, you do need to pick a lane in some respects of what you want to do past that. Yeah. yeah. So what we did, like we did with the other decks uh, and pre-cons from the past, is that we broke down the stats, and now keep in mind... These are 60-card decks, so you want to take 60% of the original estimation of what we said. So we said, like, 10 ramp. You probably want 6 ramp in a brawl deck. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get But again, we're going to push that back up to our correct numbers by the end of this episode. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at the stats. Stats, stats, stats. We need to practice that. We okay. I know. We'll do better next time. Yeah, we like so. It's like when you press play on two different things and you want yeah. them to sync up. They did. All right, the ramp in this deck is that there are ten ramp cards in this deck, so it's actually very healthily already filled with ramp. Six of them are creature based, two of them are artifacts, and two of them are spells. And also, Chu Lane is a ramp card. It, yeah, exactly. So that seems great. A lot of ramp. Yeah. yeah, seven sources of card draw, but a lot of them are limited. A lot of them are like the look at the top four cards of your library, reveal a land or creature from them. It's like draw one card, yeah, basically. Yeah, and it's like a cantrip at the same time. Well, two lane is also card draw. Yep. So you don't have to worry about those two categories as much as you might normally. Uh, and this is one thing that we noticed when we played them as well as board wipes. There's only one. There's just not a lot of board wipes in general in any given standard environment. 
So it's not that surprising. But yeah, one board wipe, that's tough in Commander. Yeah. It's tough in Brawl, too. I, I would want more than that. Uh, yeah, exactly. I've seen a lot of Brawl games go very long now. Yeah. Uh, and single target removal, there are six to seven sources of them. Some of them are attacked on the creatures. Some of them are spells. So That's pretty good. Yeah, overall, actually, this deck has a very solid base. Um, it's... I think you can buffer up the board white slot. There's a lot of stuff you can do. You can also start putting in some interesting utility lands. Uh, and what we want to say is that we can't talk about all of the 40 cards here today, but we're going to have lists online for you guys to look at. And from there, you can be like, cool, I want X, Y, and Z, or I'm going to replace this. With what, you do what you want to upgrade this deck. Yeah, but there will be a link in the show note that, that just says, here's the 40 cards we think you should put in. Uh, yeah, so that you yeah. can you can also just get a look at all the cards that we think. If you just took these 40 cards, put it into this deck, you'd have a decent commander deck. Yeah. Okay, now one thing I realized when I was playing this deck is that even though I was drawing cards all the time, I didn't always have lands to put into play. So after a certain point, it didn't feel as great because you want to put lands untapped to keep the chain going. Right. And sometimes just drawing that one card isn't enough. And when you're going to 100 cards, you're going to want to make sure that you have more redundant sources of what Chulain's doing without Chulain actually needing to be on the battlefield. So Chulain is a is a magnet for removal after oh my we've gosh we, <laughs> yeah we played these games many times off camera and what the entire group learned after very not very long is everyone would just hold a, a removal so when chulian gets cast they could immediately kill it because if you don't do that the chulian deck just snowballs out of control but if you do then the chulian deck really sort of meanders it doesn't do a lot yeah and the chulian also like it needs to draw the part of the deck that are really low cmc creatures yeah so the off balls and all that stuff to power it up so let's talk about the highlights of some of the cards we're going to be adding. Um, one of my recent favorites, and also we're keeping the budget range uh, lower as, as well. We don't reasonable. Want... We're we're going to yeah. be around like forty dollars or so. Yeah, if, you, you don't need us to tell you to add the really expensive. Like, yes, add Cyclonic Rift if you have it. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Also, uh, a lot of the cards that we add into the pre cons are going to be lands because right. you can't use the current land base and you expand it. Um, Beast Whisperer is a card that's came out uh, pretty recently and. I like this card a lot. It basically does what Chulain does. And when Chulain's on the battlefield, it acts kind of like what Yarrick is, uh, which is like you get to double up on your triggers and you're going to get a lot of creatures being cast. And then you're drawing two cards per time every single time. And there's a really good chance you'll be able to chain off with or without Chulain being there. Yeah, Beast Whisperer says whenever it's a 2 3 creature for four mana. Whenever yeah, you. Yeah, she'd probably read the Whenever card, you huh? cast a creature spell, draw a card. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and then I realized this, when you evoke a creature, you're oh, also yeah. casting it. So cards like Moldrifter all of a sudden read, pay three mana, draw three cards, put a land onto your battlefield. And if you happen to have the five, you can keep the two, two. Yep. If you want. Which yeah. is worth a lot because you can bounce that creature back to your hand. Yeah. You can also respond to the evoke trigger by bouncing, bouncing it. it back to your hand. Yep. So you can, for, what is that, six mana with two lanes ability, evoke, draw three, put a land into play bounce it back to your hand and just get to do it every single turn i mean it's a little expensive but the value but is... i mean multi is just five by itself so to do that for six is not that bad yeah that's a good point. actually that's a really good point <laughs> and you gotta do it again um another card that basically kind of does uh it, it adds to the chain if chilling starts the ch choo chain train choo choo chain <laughs> the choo choo train <laughs> now this we could have done ozzy osborne for this one <laughs> oh, Wait, what about Lord. come on ride a train oh ride it you didn't think you were going to get the song halfway through the episode. Okay, right. uh, Tatiova Benthic Druid. It's a three, a green, and a blue for a three, three. Um, and it basically says whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, you gain one life and draw a card. So this just keeps the whole chain going. Yeah. Um, choo lane, choo choo train, chain. Choo train, choo choo. Choo choo chain. Get on, get on choo choo train. Get on the train. It's choo lanes. All right, <laughs> All right. we're done. <laughs> This episode is going to be 45 minutes long. We I know, do right? It. All right. Uh, you want to read this next one? We all, this is your favorite card. Sure. One of yours. If, you have a, if you have a deck and it has green in it, you're probably going to be, want to put Seedborn Muse in there. Uh, three green green for a two four. It says untap all permanents you control during each other player's untap step. You have a ton of elf balls in this kind of deck. Yeah. And also untaps two lane. It allows you to use two lane on the activated ability on the player's turns. Mm-hmm. Plus, it just got reprinted, so it's probably the cheapest it's going to be for a long time. So I would just yep. encourage people to pick up one or two no matter what. That's the main reason it's on the yep. list, too. Uh, and a card like this pairs very well with Alchemist Refuge, a card that allows you to cast creatures at flash speed, and when you're untapping all of your elf balls and lands every single turn, Chulain is going to draw you cards, do every single thing. So this gets you a little bit more flexibility if, in case you know Chulain doesn't get immediately <laughs> removed. Well, and the thing I like about Chulain a lot is that extra land drops mean that your value 
persists even if you get board wipe. So you can yeah. just be kind of like, I'm playing creatures, I'm playing creatures, I'm doing it on your turn because I have Seaborn Muse and Vidalcan Order or whatever. And then somebody goes board wipe and you're like, fine, but I have 17 lands in play now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to rebuild and have a huge hand. Yeah. Um, Seaborn Muse also untaps uh, in a way that we like to like untap a lot of lands. Like Peregrine Drake is one of those cards that you can play. Cost five mana, but it untaps up to five lands when it enters the battlefield. So now you can have your Temple of the False Gods give you extra mana, as well as just, again, keep the Choo Choo Train going. These type of cards seem like the best kind of cards to me with Tulane. Is like yeah. you pay them for net zero mana mm -hmm. and then but you drew the card and put a land into play so it was a zero cost spell that drew a card and put a land into play that would be like the most broken card in magic right it actually it's almost as though you cast time walk yeah it's nuts like yeah. <laughs> and there's a few there's a few cards like this that untap uh lands yeah cloud of fairies does the same thing as well and they're all relatively cheap which is great um, yeah. they've been around forever now you want to get extra value out of like sort of your biggest impact creatures so cards like dream stalker and shrieking drake are both really really cheap ways to bounce permanence back to your hand um and if you're adding flash onto it then these can all of a sudden save chulain from a removal spell as well dream stalker is one in the blue for a one five randomly uh, and when it enters the battlefield, you return a permanent you control to its owner's hand. And Shrieking Drake is really efficient. One blue for a 1-1 flyer. When it comes to the battlefield, you return a creature you control to its owner's hand. So between the two, you could just bounce them back and forth, draw cards, put lands into play. Yeah, and Really drawing... efficiently ways to do it. Yeah. Well, you can also, with just one blue mana, return the Shrieking Drake to your hand. And oh, just... return self. Oh, yeah. And as I didn't long as think you're drawing that. a blue... With two land or putting a blue land into play, you could basically repeat this over and over again. And worst, yeah, worst case scenario, you just get all your lands out and yeah. draw a bunch of cards. Yeah, yeah. Dreamstalker does the same thing, but these are all mad efficient uh, and and I think just very powerful generically. Okay, well, how does this deck try and win? Well, there are a couple of ways, and one of my favorites that I think this deck can actually pull off is Shaman of the Forgotten Ways or Biorhythm on a Stick. Mm -hmm. Biorhythm is banned, but this card is not. It's two and a green for a 2-3 creature human shaman, and you can tap it to add two mana in any combination of colors to only cast creature spells. You're going to have like 90% <laughs> creature spells in a two-lane deck. Yeah, and a mechanic that we did not see much of but is very good here. It's formidable. Nine green green tap. Each player's life total becomes the number of creatures they control. Activate this ability only if creatures you control have total power eight or greater. There's a very good chance that by the time you are ha you have the ability to generate 11 mana, you're going to have a lot of creatures that tap for mana as well as are just on the battlefield. So having the formidable thing, I think it happened with this deck by turn five. Seems pretty easy, yeah. Six. Yeah, even just four creatures will do it, four yeah. two twos. so yeah. Shoe lane and Shaman by itself adds four, yeah. so... Um, it's a fun one. This also just ramps you, which is good. Uh, and yeah, so it's not bad by itself. It's pretty good by itself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, three oh, exactly. mana for a two three that adds two mana feels like a standard playable, you know, kind of mana card. But in this case, the extra tax tacked onto it is pretty good. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> oh, this is an interesting one. This is one of those cards. I think it's, it's maybe we're gonna have to start calling things Ether Flux Reservoir good. Yeah. Since Paradox Engine. Although we all banned. saw what happened when we did that. <laughs> this is a card that's just going in more and more decks, or it can go in more and more decks, and it's Ether Flux Reservoir. So you're suggesting uh, this here because so many cards are going to get cast, especially like Shrieking Drake. If you yeah. played that with Ether Flux Reservoir out, here's what it does. Four mana artifact. Whenever you cast a spell, gain one life for each spell you've cast this turn, and you can pay 50 life, and Ether Flux Reservoir deals 50 damage to any target. So if you Yowza. can... Yeah, if you can play one of those creatures that bounces itself over and over and over again, or just a lot of creatures because you're putting lands into play untapped and things like that, you can easily cast five, six, seven spells. Even in this, in the EDH, uh, no, sorry, even in the Brawl pre-con format, I was yeah. casting four or five spells. Yeah, not that hard to do. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, it's a, just another, that's a way to win. And Yeah, one of those easy, I guess it's easy with shoe lane especially, but it's a, definitely an easy way to close out the game very quickly. Um, this next card, I think, is just super duper value and i think it, it doesn't like necessarily need you to lead you to a win but it's not that expensive and it's very good in the deck like this it's abundance it's two green green for an enchantment if you would draw a card you may instead choose land or non-land and reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card of the chosen kind put that card into your hand and put all other cards revealed this way on the bottom of your library in any order so every single time you cast a creature and you're going to draw a card abundance says all right do you say land or non-land? And you're like, well, I have a land in hand. So non-land. You will reveal cards until you reveal a non-land card, and then you'll draw that card, and you have a land in your hand to put on the battlefield. You play another creature. Well, I'm out of lands. Name land. So this really pairs very well with Chulain. You can almost 
guaranteed always have a land drop when you play a creature with Chulain and this out. I love this card in this deck. That's really smart because one of the ways that when you play the deck or play against it, you find the stopgap, the thing that kind of is the yeah. speed bump for it is when it draws too much of one type and not enough of the other. Uh, so being able to just control that is, seems really, really powerful. Yep, and Abundance. Just a good name for what's happening here. <laughs> uh, now, finally, I had two... Uh, I guess these are scarier and not so player-friendly when mean? conditions. Yeah, they're mean. Um, <laughs> Two it's, mean cards? <laughs> it's overburdened. It's okay. You can talk about some mean cards, Jimmy. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> they're also a little on the pricier side. He so feels all bad about I it. I do. Because I, I just keep thinking, like, if I played this at, at MF Vegas, would I have felt bad? <laughs> I've been like, yeah, for the most part, yeah. I mean, it depends on what true. everyone else is playing. True, yeah, true, yeah. true. <laughs> it's all contextual. <laughs> if they play a Vornclex on me, that's when I pull out one. Okay, well, I've been holding this card in my hand, but I'm going to play it now. That's true. Yesterday you said, if you ever make me discard my entire hand, then I'm just, it's over All for you. All bets are off. Yeah, I can do like, whatever I want yeah, now. It's like, I guess it's the same for like blowing up lands. <laughs> These cards may not get all the way there, but they're going to get close. Um, and they're a little more on the pricey side. It's Overburden and Mana Breach. Uh, do you want to read Overburden? Sure. It's one in a blue for an enchantment. Whenever a player puts a non-token creature onto the battlefield, that player returns a land they control to its owner's hand. So what happens is you you play this, the creature with Tulane, you return the land to your hand, um, I think what you'll have to, and then you put the land back out. Yeah. Can you put the same land back out that you bounce? I'm not sure if you can do that, but if, if you if you have two lands, you can start doing it basically, right? Yeah. Let's see. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. So this is the cast trigger, and then it's yeah. the enter the battlefield trigger. So the cast trigger happens first. So you're gonna put right. the land in. But if you have a card like Field of Dead out. Well, you're, you're bouncing lands and you're playing them over and over again, and you're making all these two two zombies across. Or if the you even have one land in hand, now you're even on lands every time you play a creature. But yeah. everybody else, every time they play a creature, is down a land. Yeah, that's why this that's is super crazy. busted. Because yeah. every single time they cast something, they have to bounce something. But you're like, I'm net zero still. Uh, Mana breach is very similar. It's an enchantment for two and a blue. Whenever a player casts a spell. That player returns a land they control to its owner's hand. Now, this one is even more brutal. It taxes you a little bit because now whenever you don't play a creature spell, you're returning lands, but you're still going to be you're like, super far ahead on lands. Well, and m most of your stuff is creatures. Like, by far, yeah. you're mostly creatures in a two-lane deck. So it's almost the same for you as Overburden is. But for everybody else, now it's like instants and sorceries and <laughs> artifacts and enchantment. Oh, Can man. Can you imagine playing a rampant growth and yeah. getting zero lands off it, basically? <laughs> I used to have this in my Nekusar deck because I would just play it and then just go, okay, everybody, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Try and stop me because you're going to be slowed down. Yeah. Wow, that's mean. Yeah, so it's a really, really powerful card. Yeah. It's kind of the capper. You mm -hmm. get like five or six creatures out, cast this, and just cross your arms and be like, okay, okay. I can still do stuff because every time I cast a creature, I have the same amount of lands. Yeah. You are in trouble, though. Yeah, everyone, the more they try and catch, it's like they're being slowed down by sludge. The more they try and catch up, the, fall, the further behind they fall. All right, so those are my basic recommendations. Again, you can see the full list and what we added in the show notes below. There's going to be a lot more lands in there that are interesting. Like I mentioned, Field of the Dead is a is very playable in standard right now and a great way to also end out the game because the deck comes with cards like Enray's Forerunners in there, Forerunners, which is a Crater Hoof Behemoth effect. So there are a few ways to win with this deck, and hopefully you get to take Chew Lane to the next level and upgrade it for a decent price. All right, everyone, no end step and whatnot on these short episodes because we're going to be doing one of them for each of the Brawl decks. Special thanks to Ashlyn Rose and Craig Blanchett, who are our editors. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Jeffrey Palmer does the living card animations behind us and the ones that start and end the show. Let us know what you think about these mini-sodes in the comments below. Hope you guys like it and hope you are able to take these Brawl pre-cons to the next level. All right, everybody, we'll see you next time. See ya. Peace. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs> <laughs>